Right. What is the internal rate of return? The internal rate of return is the rate of return promised by an investment project over its useful life. It is computed by finding the discount rate that will cause the net present value of a project to be zero. Okay. Um, so we look at this again. How you find it? You find the discount rate that will cause the net present value of a project to be zero. So, and when NPV is zero, whatever discount rate you're using is the internal rate of return or the IRR. Okay. It works very well if a project's cash flow are identical every year. If the annual cash flows are not identical, the trial and error process must be used to find the internal rate of return. That is because you have to go back to the tables to go in and reverse order from the NPV. Okay, let's take a look at the example. Right, use the NPV method to determine which all West products should invest in the following projects. Project A costs 290,000 and offers seven annual net cash inflows of 63,000. Old West products requires an annual rate of 14% on projects like A. So we will take the 290,000 and divide it by 63,000 and we get 4.603. And this figure we will look up in the tables. Okay, that's here. Yeah, we will look up in the tables here. And you don't get an exact answer. All right? You wouldn't get an exact answer. So we're between 14% and uh, between 10 and 12%. Okay, now this is a bit blurry here because I couldn't get a, a big enough text to get it off. Right, so you take the project course of 290 and offer seven annual that. Oh, so you would look down here to seven annual and then you go across until you find the figure here. Oh, Point six zero three, and it would be somewhere between ten and twelve percent. Could be eleven percent, but there is no um, column for eleven percent on the tables. Okay. Now what will happen is you will take this rate here, and you will compare it with the rate that we spoke about earlier. Okay, the discount rate here. Right, that rate would cause the net present value to be equal to zero. And this would be compared with the rate of return, or sorry, with the rate of capital borrowing. And on the interest in exams, you are given that rate, so you needn't worry about it. Okay, use the NPV to determine whether all was products should invest in following products. We look at the other one, we have 395, and the net cash inflows is 71,000. All West product demand an annual return of 10% on investment of this state here. Compute all the all of each project and this information to identify the better investment. So we'll take the 395 divided by the 71 and we get 5.563. Okay, same thing here. 
पर रख दी थ्री नाइनटी फाइव डिवाइडेड बाय सेवेंटी वन थाउजेंड वी गेट फाइव पॉइंट फाइव सिक्स थ्री आईआरआर इज बिटवीन और अगेन वी चेक इट डाउन तो दिस टाइम इट इज ओमनियर्स नंबर ऑफ टेन परसेंट ऑन इन्वेस्टमेंट्स ऑफ दिस नेटिया सो वी विल गेट सेवेन इयर्स अगेन टेन इयर्स राइट And we will go across until we find this figure. Okay, and this one here is lower than it, and this one here is higher than it. So it's somewhere between ten and twelve percent. Okay, so we will get um, somewhere between twelve and fourteen percent, sir. Right, right. If the internal rate of return method, general decision rule, if the internal rate of return is equal to or greater than the minimum required rate of return, right? Notice we have that again. The required rate of return, right? The business usually has in other investments that they have a required rate of return on, and uh, So this is the rate that you will compare the IRR to, and if it's equal to or greater, you will accept. If it's less than the minimum required rate of return, you will reject it. Right? When we're using the internal rate of return, the cost of capital, right? This is what I'm saying. So I'm saying just now, the cost of capital acts as a little rate that the project must clear for acceptance. The cost of capital means the interest that interest rate that you pay on the any borrowing if you borrow any money to make the investment. Okay, exact as a little rate or as an acceptance that you want play for acceptance, and that rate is the required rate of return that we have mentioned here. Right. So it says we have the expected annual net cash flow from a project is twenty two thousand over the next five years. The required investment now in the project is seventy nine to ten. What is the internal rate of return on the project? Okay, so we can rule this one out. It can be determined, right? So we have the workings here, seventy nine to ten. Divided by the twenty-two thousand, and we get three point six zero five. Then we go in the column. We go in the column for years. We count down to five years, and then we go across the present value factor for the annual two or five years when the interest rate is twelve percent. Okay. So on that twelve percent, you will see three. Six zero five. Therefore, B here is your answer. Okay. Now, what usually happens in your exam is you are given the tables relevant to the problem that you are working on. Okay. The net present value method of one project cannot be directly computed. Compared to the net present value of another project, unless the investments are equal, right? Um, this is one of the general rules. However, most of the time in your exam, you notice that Keep is ignoring this rule completely. Okay, they ask you to compare investments that the net present value, sorry, that the investments are not equal. The ranking of the investments, screening decisions pertain to whether or not some proposed investment is acceptable. These decisions come first, so you have to see whether the NPV is greater than or equal to zero, and all of your projects that you're thinking about, you will compare that 
and select those that's called a screening decision. A preference decision, you will attempt now to rank the acceptable alternatives for the most to the least appealing. And uh, how you're going to do that? You have to, one. When using the internal rate of return method to rank completed investment projects, the preference rule is the higher the internal rate of return, the more desirable the project. So among when after you screen your projects, you come and you shortlist a few of them, the one with the highest internal rate of return, that would be the one that you would desire to invest in. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this um, presentation, and uh, I hope you find it helpful. If you do, you should give it a thumbs up. If not, you can give it a thumbs down, and I will see you again in the next video.